and will fly on the space shuttle next February. The Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, or the AMS-2, is aimed at learning more about the origin and structure of the universe by observing antimatter and dark matter. It may even detect an anti-universe made of antimatter. With a magnetic field 4,000 times stronger than that of Earth's, the particle detector will directly examine each particle passing through it in a program designed to complement that of the Large Hadron Collider, ATLAS. It will also gather information from cosmic radiation sources on stars and galaxies millions of light years away. The ISIS is the only place where it can be ins installed due to in stability reasons and long-term exposure. But it's expected, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer is expected to remain active for the entire lifetime of the International Space Station and will not return to Earth. Now, there's been much seeking of dark matter. The other was the RHIC, the Rick experiment, going in with their Phoenix and star colliding gold particles together, and they being the first to announce that they had found this dark matter on Earth. What is going on with all of these? Uh, when we start to look to extraterrestrial combative forces and now the U.S. Air Force has just announced their, their space readiness, uh, getting ready for their space force. Uh, beyond having craft to, to attack and fight extraterrestrial invasion, they might just use something like heart. We'll get into this and lots more. You're listening to The Free Zone. So is this fear of E.T. just really a method of weaponizing space? Get people on board. Well, it hasn't been E.T.'s of late. It's been asteroids, of course, or near-Earth objects, as uh, our new U.N. ambassador to the aliens wants to discuss. Now, uh, we just launched the first space-based space surveillance system, the SBSS, uh, launching last Sunday. And this, uh, this SBSS actually is, is reported by an, uh, the first Air Force asset dedicated to the purpose of observing satellites or debris in space. So this was launched by a Minotaur rocket out of Vandenberg Air Force Base. And uh, this is the same place where they attempted to launch the hypersonic test vehicle which seemed to be a major fail, and that was the same day that they were launching NASA's X-37B, or what's known as the Flying Twinkie, a secretive space shuttle that's orbiting our planet as we speak. And now they've got the SBSS up there, and they are getting ready for Air, Air Force Space Command's first space operations squadron to uh, interface with this satellite. So as we start to see our uh, space war building and our space force building, the announcement of uh, the United States Air Force space launches into production phase. Air Force uh, space launch activity is in the midst of an unprecedented ramp up as it enters a new production era, says Lieutenant General Tom Sheridan. And uh, he's the commander of Space and Missile Systems Center at Los Angeles Air Force Base. So they've introduced five new systems over a span of 12 to 18 months, a new era at their uh, facilities. And so as we launch the SBSS, the space-based satellite, we've got the asteroid watch. We've got WISE announcing these incoming stars and other bodies out there, near-Earth objects becoming the, the talk of the town. Uh, and meanwhile, NASA is putting up deep wave guide antennas in Australia. Well, I've really got to wonder if uh, some of these technologies aren't for extraterrestrial opposition. Because when you start to look into, as I was saying, with these early UFO crashes in the 40s and 50s, it was all radar-based. And then they found that high-frequency uh, radio frequency waves would also have a, a devastating effect on these flying craft. So now we have numerous of these uh, devices around the planet, around the globe, even bringing about the Norway spiral. 
And we have to start to wonder, because these things are capable of sending transmissions all the way to another star system, as they sent the Doritos commercial to Alpha Centauri with the iSCAT antenna array. And just recently, we had the launch of the Atlas V, which uh, was launching up the, the Air Force's first advanced extremely high-frequency satellite. It was a middle-of-the-night departure, and uh, that went out of Florida. So now we have numerous satellites going up recently with high-frequency uh, attack range-type frequency satellites. And we have the ground-based systems going up as well, along with the surveillance systems of space base surveillance. What is going on? Meanwhile, we get all of these ET announcements, uh, the fear of UFOs deterring our, our nuclear programs. That was all over the news. What would happen? That's, that's always my biggest question, is what would happen? How would people react? Would we stop and think about our lives? Would we stop and wonder why we are doing what we are doing. Would you go to work that day? I wonder a lot of times because I see people just kind of going about their day. And I, I, I District 9, uh, Peter Jackson, you think about how those people are like, ah, oh, those nasty aliens, you know, we got enough people taking our jobs. <laughs> and continued to think about their real world issues while this craft hung out over the city. Or in the same way with the V series, where they're exchanging people up into the, the UFOs and they're offering us all of these advancements in science and medicines. Would aliens come and try and save planet Earth? Not likely. I think any race that's advanced enough to, to have that kind of empathy would know that we have to save ourselves. Because once you're saved, you're a victim. Once you're saved, you're in the debt. And only through your own actions can you find your way out. And so this is what I think would really be the effect of alien arrival, is people would start to question everything they're doing. But then again, I look around and I see the matrix, and I, I just, you know, with all of the amazing things that are going on right now, people should be already questioning their existence and why they go to work every day. Because what we see as the fulfillment of our endeavors, other than the needless supply and demand of uh, commodities, of, of not commodities, but of trinkets, of things that are unnecessary, uh, what does civilization actually build? Well, it mines a lot of gold, there's no doubt about that. That's uh, generally step A. But it also produces these high technological advancements. Now, as I'm mentioning these $2 billion alpha magnetic spectrometers to find the anti-universe or the $79 million bombing of the moon or the multi-trillions going into CERN, uh, what is this all about? And why are we participating and continuing in this agenda? That's always my question that it all comes down to is our very participation in all of this. So to get to the ET story, really, it comes right back home, and we got to realize that if they've been here, they've always been here. If they come, they've always came. And that life on planet Earth is more likely a zoo crafted of extraterrestrial origins. All of our ancient tales tell us this, the ancient tales of the Indians, the Mayans, the, the North Americans, uh, everywhere you go, you get this extraterrestrial tale, creation of civilization. Yet civilization doesn't serve humanity one bit, as far as I can tell. And I, I, when I look to cities, I find some of the worst examples of human existence that are anywhere on this planet. We're not meant to live like that. The systems in play now are setting up a grid, setting up a, a world of unimaginable 
<laughs> destruction. I mean, they don't know what's going to happen. They did not know what would happen when they set off the hydrogen bomb, the nuclear bomb, the harp, CERN, any of these events that they keep just trying and attempting and manipulating could be cataclysmic on planet Earth. And yet we continue to participate. Now, if you can't see the money trail from your job up to the military industrial complex, then you're missing the whole picture. And I think that's a picture that's hard for many to see. When I start talking to people about rituals on video music awards or the 1010 advertisement of having your head explode for not participating in carbon emission reduction, we'll just kill you. <laughs> and people say, oh, they're just being funny. But yet you and I, we've been looking at this picture for so long, we see an agenda. We see a mission, a guiding of mankind's mentality towards a certain outcome. And so then we're labeled, of course, the conspiracy theorist. And hardly can even get those around us that do not see that things are done on purpose, that there is absolutely an agenda to all of this extraterrestrial releasing of information in the UN, the Vatican, and everybody else. And there's also an agenda to showing you heads exploding if you don't pay or uh, consign yourself to the idea of global warming. Now, it was certainly hot today. It really shouldn't be as hot as it is here in Lawrence, Kansas on 10 9. Oh, 9. Oh, 10. <laughs> I was thinking of the bombing of the moon a year already. I mean, really. Uh, and this is more than likely due to our position in the universe as opposed to uh, some carbon emissions by humanity. But we see them building our cage, and we're the ones building it. So I don't only want to come out and report the ways that they're building the cage around us. I want to try and inspire you to live differently. Now, there are many ways to say it, non-compliance with the system. That's rather obtuse. That, that's, uh, well, what's the system? What am I not complying? And why did I comply in the first place? So I, I, I prefer to trigger things a little harsher, you know, get the, the old gauge going. And I, instead of non-compliance with the system, I would say, quit your job, save the world. And I know that this puts a trigger in people's minds. But would you quit your job if aliens showed up on planet Earth, if flying craft were hanging out? Because it's up to us, you and I, to, to change the course. Now, maybe Mr. Zane was correct in that we will split off. But to me, that seems no accomplishment at all. I have more compassion for all the other humans, even people like George Bush and Dick Cheney, as to wanting to bring them along, I guess. Or even the reptilians or any of the extraterrestrial races. I, I, I don't think I want to just be teleported in nirvana without accomplishing some sort of mission here on planet Earth. And I know that this is my one chance. Here I am on the third dimension. Here I am on planet Earth. I can't just sit and go to work. I can't just try and go to college and... When you see what's actually going on, you cannot comply with the system. It just no longer computes. Can't get along with the norms. Can't really function in the system any longer. When you know the truth of things, or at least have gotten close to the truth of things. And so it's up to us, as we become aware, to be the ones to step forward and help those, guide those, through the transitional phases. And that would be an accomplishment. That you will feel good and fulfilled from your endeavors. But meanwhile, they're hitting us with all types of frequencies. These harp emissions, these...